This episode is brought to you by Cisco Educational Premium. Okay. So last week, part one, we looked at something on the wave equation. We introduced ourselves on what the wave equation is. And we looked at example of waves. We went on, we went on to look at the wave equation in one space dimension and even derived it. Today, I want us to dig deeper into the wave equation and starting with like, what does it mean? But before we get started, I want you to take a piece of paper and a pen. Mm, oh no, that's even too far. Just uh, down in the comments, type this name. Gene D'Alembert. He's the guy who first who first solved the wave equation as we are going to look at. The one-dimensional wave equation is unusual for partial differential equation in that a relatively simple general solution may be found. Defining new variables as shown changes the wave equation into partial square on partial square on partial square u on partial psi partial eta is equivalent to zero which leads to the general solution as shown or equivalently u x t is equivalent to f x minus c t plus g x plus c t in other words the solutions of one t wave equation are sums of a right traveling function f and a left traveling function g Traveling and I quote means that the shape of these individual individual arbitrary functions with respect to x stays constant. However, the functions are translated left and right with time at the speed c. This was derived by Jean Leronde de Alembert. Another way to arrive at this result is to factor the wave equation into two one-way wave equations. From this, V must have the form G X plus E T, and from this, the correct form of the full solution U can be deduced. The usual second order wave equation is sometimes called the two way wave equation. It's a proposition of two waves to, di di to distinguish it from the first order one way wave equation, describing the wave propagation of a single wave in a predefined direction. For initial value problem the arbitrary functions f and g can be determined to satisfy initial conditions ux0 is equivalent to fx ut x0 is equivalent to gx the result is the Lambert formula in the classical sense if fx in ck and gx in ck minus one and new tx in ck however the waveforms of f and g may also be generalized functions such as the delta function in that case the solution may be interpreted as an impulse that travels to the right or or the left the basic wave equation is a linear differential equation and so it will adhere to the superposition principle this means that the net displacement caused by two or more waves is the sum of the displacements which will have been caused by each wave individually. In addition, the behavior of a wave can be analyzed by breaking up the wave into components like the Fourier transform breaks up a wave into sinusoidal components. Another way to solve the one-dimensional wave equation is to first analyze its frequency Eigen modes. A so called Eigen mode is a solution that oscillates in time with a well defined constant angular frequency rho so that the temporal part of the wave function takes the form and the amplitude is a function fx of the spatial variable x, giving a separation of variables for the wave function. This produces an ordinary differential equation for the spatial path fx 
shown which is precisely an eigen value of equation for fx hence the name eigen mode does the well-known plane wave solutions as shown fx is equivalent to ae plus or minus ikx that is this has been raised to that the wave number k is equivalent to the total wave function of this eigen mode is then the linear combination shown where the numbers a b depend in general or in initial and boundary condition of the problem. Eigen modes are useful in constructing a full solution of the, a full solution to the wave equation because each of them evolves in time trivially. The phase factor E. So that a full solution can be decomposed into an eigen mode expansion as shown. Which is exactly in the same form as in the algebraic approach. Functions S are known as the Fourier component and are determined by initial and boundary conditions. These are so-called frequent domain method, alternative to direct time domain propagations, such as FDTD method of the wave packet UXT, which is complete for representing waves in absence of time dilations. Completeness of the Fourier expansion for representing waves in presence of time dilation has been challenged by cheap wave solutions, allowing for time variation. The cheap wave solutions seem particularly implied by very large but previously inexplicable rather residuals in the flyby anomaly and differ from sinusoidal solutions in being receivable at any distance only at proportionally shifted frequencies and time dilations corresponding to past chip states of the source. The vectorial wave equation from which the scalar wave equation can be directly derived can be obtained by applying a force equilibrium to an infinite simul volume element. In an homogeneous continuum, Cartesian coordinate x with a constant modulus elastic of elasticity E, a factorial elastic deflection uxt causes the stress tensor T is equivalent to E del U PA, the local equilibrium of A, the tension force. Diff T is equivalent to del dot E del U is equivalent to E delta U Newton per meter cubic due to the due to deflection U M and B the initial force rho partial square U on partial T square Newton per cubic meter caused by the local acceleration partial square u on partial t square meter per second square can be written as shown rho partial square u on partial t square is minus e delta u is equivalent to zero by matching the density rho kilograms per cubic meter and elasticity module e the sound velocity C is equivalent to root E on rho meter per second. Results material law. After insertion follows the well-known governing wave equation for our homogeneous medium. Partial square U on partial T square minus C square delta U is equivalent to zero. Not instead of factorial UXT, only scalar UXT can be used, i.e. waves are traveling only along the x-axis and the scalar wave equation follows as partial square u on partial t square minus c square partial square u on partial x square is equivalent to zero the above factorial partial differential equation of the second order delivers two mutually independent solutions from the quadratic velocity term c square is equivalent to plus c square is equivalent to Negative C square can be seen 
that there are two ways of traveling in opposite directions. Plus C and negative C are possible. Hence results the designation two-way wave equation. And I quote, it can be shown for plain longitudinal wave propagation that the synthesis of two one-way wave equations leads to a general two-way wave equation. For del C is equivalent to zero, special two-wave equation with the D'Alembert operator source as shown. Therefore, the factorial of factorial first order one-way wave equation with waves traveling in predefined propagation direction C results as partial U on partial T minus C dot del U is equivalent to zero. A solution of the initial value problem for the wave equation in three space dimensions can be obtained from the corresponding solution for a, sp a spherical wave. The result can be also used to obtain the same solution in two space dimensions. The wave equation can be solved using the technique of separation of variables. To obtain a solution with constant frequencies, let us first Fourier transform the wave equation in time as shown. Psi r t is equivalent to integral from negative infinity to infinity psi r omega e raised to negative i omega t d omega. So we get del square plus omega square on c square psi r omega is equivalent to zero. This is the Helmholtz. This is the Helmholtz equation and can be solved using separation of variables. If spherical coordinates are used to describe a problem, then the solution to the angular part of the Helmholtz equation is given by spherical harmonics and the radial equation now becomes shown. Here K and the complete solution is now given as shown where h sub l 1 kr and h sub l 2 kr are spherical angle functions. For example, to gain a better understanding of the nature of these spherical waves, let us go back and look at the case, the case when l is equivalent to 0. In this case, there is no angular dependence and the amplitude depends only on the radial distance. That is, psi rt goes to urt. In this case, the wave equation reduces to a shown, which can be written as, as, as shown, where the quantity ru satisfies one dimensional wave equation. Therefore, there are solution in the form shown where f and g are general solutions to the one dimensional wave equation and can be interpreted as respect respectively an, out, an outgoing or incoming spherical wave the outgoing wave can be generated by a point source and they make possible sharp signals whose form is altered only by a decrease in amplitude as R increases. Such waves exist only in cases of space with odd dimensions. Although the word monochromatic is not exactly accurate, since it refers to light or electromagnetic radiation with a well defined frequency, the spirit is to discover the Eigen mode of the wave equation in three dimensions. Following the derivation in the previous section on pain wave Eigen modes, if we again restrict our solutions to spherical waves that oscillate in time with well defined constant angular frequency omega, then the transform function RU RT has simply plain wave solutions shown. From this, we can observe that the peak intensity of the sphery spherical waves oscillation, characterized as the square wave amplitude shown drops at the rate proportional to 1 on r square, an example of the inverse square law. The wave equation is linear in U and it is left 
and altered by translations in space and time. Therefore, we can generate a great variety of solutions by translating and summing spherical waves. Let phi be an arbitrary function of three independent variables. And let the spherical wave from f be a delta function. It is let f be a weak limit of continuous functions whose integrity is unit, but whose support the region where the function is non zero shrinks the re to, to the origin. Let the family of sp sp spherical waves have center, and let r be the radial distance from that point. Thus, we get the equation as, uh, the, the equation as shown. If u is a superposition of such waves with weighting function psi, then we get as shown. And the de denominator 4 pi c is a convenience. From the definition of the delta function, u may, may also be written as shown, where alpha, beta, and gamma are coordinates on the unit sphere S and omega is the area element on S. This result has the interpretation that u, u tx is t times the mean value of phi on a sphere of radius city centered at x as shown. And it follows as in the equations u 0 x y z is equivalent to 0 u t 0 x y z is equivalent to phi x y z the mean value is an even function of t and ends if v t x y z is equivalent to partial on partial t t m c t psi then v 0 x y z is equivalent to psi x y z v t 0 x y z is equivalent to 0 this formula provides solution for the initial value problem for the wave equation. They show that the solution at a given point P, given T, X, Y, Z, depends only on the data on the sphere of radius CT that is intersected by the light cone drawn backwards from P. It does not depend upon the data on the interior of this sphere. Thus, the interior of the sphere is a kuna for the solution. This phenomenon is called Huygens principle. It is true for odd numbers of space dimension, where for one dimension the integration is performed over the boundary of an interval with respect to the direct measure. It is not satisfied in even space dimensions. The phenomenon of lacunas has been extensively investigated in Tia Bot and Ding, 6 Educational Premium is a section of Cisco Educationals with content that is not hosted here. There are episodes ranging from long to short videos. Remember those good old shots of ours? They are there. So do we get there? Use the link on screen or in the description or in the pinned comment below. Enjoy yourself. And I will see you in the next episode of Cisco Educationals.